I am crucified with Christ, yet I live no longer I, but Christ lives in me. I live by faith in the Son of God, who has loved me and given himself up for me. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. Amen. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May mighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christ eleison. Christ eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who adorned the sacred body of your church with the confessions of holy martyrs, grant we pray that just as the glorious passion of St. Ignatius of Antioch, which we celebrate today, brought him eternal splendor, so it may be for us unending protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, hearing of your faith in the Lord Jesus and of your love for all the holy ones, I do not cease giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the one God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of our, your hearts be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call, what are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones, and what is the surprising greatness of his power for us who believe, in accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet, and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> you have given your son rule over the works of your hands. You have given your son rule over the works of your hands. O oh Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name over all the earth. You have exalted your majesty above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings, you have fashioned praise because of your foes. You have given your son rule over the works of your hands. When I behold your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you set in place, what is man that you should be mindful of him, or the son of man that you should care for him? You have given your son rule over the works of your hands. You have made him little less than the angels and crowned him with the glory and honor you have given him rule over the works of your hands, putting all things under his feet. You have given, you have given him son the rule over the works of your hands. 
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Spirit of Truth will testify to me, says the Lord, and you also will testify. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. From the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, everyone who acknowledges me before others, the Son of Man will acknowledge before the angels of God. But whoever denies me before others will be denied before the angels of God. Everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But the one who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. And they take you before synagogues and before rulers and authorities. Do not worry about how or what your defense will be or what you are to say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you at that moment what you should say. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So today is the first of all, Father Stephen Abrado of Life Ministries US.org, Life Ministries US.org. And I am here at Mary's Outreach for Women in St. Petersburg uh, to celebrate Mass. We celebrated Mass last night. We're celebrating Mass again this morning. I did prayers of exorcism and we did a evening vigil out in front of the abortion mill last night and uh, we're going to pray again there uh, tomorrow uh, to, uh, this morning after this mass and so it's a great blessing to be here I was here about a year ago as everybody reminded me uh, it was about a year ago that I was here so it's a great blessing and today is the feast day of Saint Ignatius of Antioch bishop and martyr. He was of Assyrian origin. Ignatius served as the third bishop of Antioch for 40 years until he was arrested and escort, escorted to Rome where he died for sport in the amphitheater around the year 107. The seven letters he composed of, of, this, of his journey inspired generations of Christians. Let me be food for the wild beast, he begged his brethren in Rome. For they are my way to God. I am God's wheat and shall be ground by their teeth so that I may become Christ's pure bread. Mm -hmm. Pray to Christ for me that the animals will be the means of making me a sacrificial victim for God. So beautiful testimony. Uh, now, uh, a couple of things about uh, uh, Antioch, uh, uh, the uh, St. Ignatius <coughs> of Antioch. Uh, he was the third bishop of Antioch. I don't know who the first bishop was, um, the second bishop was of Antioch, but St. Peter was the first bishop of Antioch. So uh, that's significant. And, uh, and Ignatius, uh, he died in the year 107. So have you seen, and I have this in my house actually, the picture of of uh, let the children come to me is the picture where you see Jesus surrounded by the young children as a child sitting on Jesus's knee that is reported in our tradition to be Ignatius right oh. Ignatius yes and uh, so uh, just a couple of tidbits about him now uh, there's also, in a, in, a, in a more modern scene, right, the great, great Nissel, I think, go down historically, uh, I think it, it will be once she gets confirmed, which, of course, the confirmation uh, vote is supposed to be this coming Thursday when my friend Claire is entering into Carmel, but the confirmation vote is supposed to be this Thursday in the Feast of St. John Paul II uh, for Amy Barrett. All right, so keep that in your prayers, uh, and uh, how apropos, right? Uh, but in keeping with the gospel, right, uh, don't worry about what you are to say. The Holy Spirit will tell you what to say. You're probably all familiar with the questioning of Amy Barrett when uh, the one senator says, uh, 
could you, you know, we all have notes, notebooks here, we all reference <laughs> notes, and, and I'm sure he was either wondering, you know, uh, or, or, you know, he, he says, can you, can you hold up your notes? Can you hold up what's in front of you? And she holds up a, a blank pad. And uh, he says, and, and could you tell us what's, what's on that pad? Now, this is a Democratic uh, 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 senator, I believe, Corning, uh, Cornyn, uh, who was questioning her. And uh, she says, well, it just says it's got the uh, logo of the United States Senate on it, right? Uh, I mean, a classic example, right, of don't worry, right? Don't worry, the Holy Spirit will tell you what to say. And, of course... I said it was women. It was a woman amongst boys. Uh, if you followed the hearings at all, and, and what they, of course, tried to do to her, and uh, she surely was uh, filled with the Holy Spirit, and just a, a great example for our Catholic faith. Uh, now, in in the in the gospel, all right, you know, Jesus says, "I tell you." Everyone who acknowledges me before others, the Son of Man will acknowledge. Whoever denies me before others will be denied before the angels of God, right? And whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. Uh, but the one who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. What is, what is Jesus talking about here, right? Uh, acknowledging Jesus as what? The source of all mercy. Whoever denies Jesus as the source of all mercy will be denied. All right, um, and uh, the the whole idea: whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. Um, meaning that they that anyone who understands about Christ's mercy and the need for repentance, the need for forgiven, will be forgiven. Okay. Uh, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. And what is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? It's the only unforgivable sin, right? And what is that? The refusal to ask for forgiveness, right? The refusal to acknowledge God's mercy, right? This is the only unforgivable sin. This was the sin of Judas, right? The sin of Judas, and this is what's dangerous, all right, as I spoke about Joe Biden last night and these other Catholics, all right, who, as Canon 915 says, obstinately persevere in manifest grave evil. The danger there, obstinately persevering, is they don't feel that they're sinning. They are obviously sinning. It's manifest. It's public. All right, and they 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 will not ask for forgiveness, and this is what happens when we rationalize sin. This is why you know Jesus says, "Woe to those who call good evil and evil good, to hell to them." Because once we rationalize our sin, then we no longer feel the need to ask for forgiveness for our sins, and this is when the evil one has us. Now, uh. In, I believe it's uh, either Hebrews or Timothy, all right, where we, uh, and I, I, I think it's Timothy, where Paul says uh, 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 that, G, that, that uh, those who uh, uh, deny Jesus, Jesus will deny them. But those who are unfaithful, all right, Jesus remains faithful because he cannot deny himself. Very similar to what we hear, right? Right? That those who deny Jesus, Jesus will deny them. But if we are unfaithful, Jesus will remain faithful because he cannot deny himself. What does that mean? What does that mean? This is a very important passage for all of us when dealing with our Christian brothers and sisters who are not Catholic. Right? What does that mean? Right? That... If uh, we deny Jesus, Jesus will deny us. But if we're unfaithful, Jesus remains faithful, all right, uh, and he, he will not deny us. What does that mean? It's the distinction between, again, venial sin or even mortal sin when we are cognizant, our sin is before us, and we're cognizant of our need for repentance, contrition, and forgiveness, all right, seeking Christ's mercy. But denying Jesus means, all right, that we deny his mercy, 
We deny his mercy. So if we deny Jesus in the context of his mercy, he will deny us. If we're unfaithful, he remains faithful, meaning that as long as we go to him, he will forgive us because he cannot deny his mercy. He cannot even deny his own mercy, right? So this is very, very important. And this, this, this of course, is, is so prevalent in, in, in our culture today. We see people in persistent mortal sin. I call it PMS, right? That's, <laughs> that's what I, I've, I've now named, and I posted that, uh, that henceforth through the election, all Biden Catholics will be called uh, having the condition of PMS, mm -hmm. right? Persistent mortal sin. Uh, but but see this this becomes the problem right that if you're in persistent mortal sin you don't feel the need for forgiveness contrition we see this with Nancy Pelosi mm -hmm. right who and 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 all all of them all of them and and you know a friend of mine I had lunch uh, a couple of months ago before I went on the road and uh, uh, Father Chad R Rippinger the uh, says that you know sin makes people dumb right the original saying is sin makes people stupid right and what does that mean uh, well sin is stupid in and of itself it's disordered all right but again uh, we're all capable of sinning right we all have that that propensity for weakness at any given time you know whether it be even uh, uh, hopefully not uh, sexual inclinations but uh, gossip, anger, right? Uh, uh, a any number of things, right? Um, and 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 um, we, we want to avoid that sin, but persistent mortal sin, persistent sin makes people stupid, all right? Uh, and we can see this. I, I saw another uh, I saw another video this morning when I woke up about Joe Biden. Uh, when he was on the Judiciary Committee interviewing or, or actually questioning Clarence Thomas, right. All right, when Clarence Thomas was up, and he's saying, uh, I want to talk to you about the natural, and he's, he's acting like such a pompous jerk because he says, you know, uh, you know, people who are not lawyers, right, you know, don't understand natural law, but you know and I know, and, 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 and of course this is all about natural, and he's making it sound as if and then they're cutting away to Clarence Thomas. He's being interviewed later on, and uh, uh, and and he was asked, you know, what what did you, uh, you know, think about that question? And he says, well, he says I don't think he knew what he was talking about, <laughs> right? And and of course he did. And I posted. I said, I wonder, you know, I wonder if Joe Biden could give the definition of natural law, all right? Now I'm going to put you guys on the spot. I'll put you guys on the spot too. What is the simple definition of natural law? Yes. What God, what God puts in us. That's right. All right. It's 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 the the the, the I guess the, the 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 technical theological definition would be it's the reflection of the eternal law, the divine law in the hearts of man. Okay, mm -hmm. right? So the natural law is the reflection of God's law in us, right? The other term you may hear is uh, 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 the natural law is written in the hearts of man, mm -hmm. all right? That we know inherently what's right and what's wrong. Mm -hmm. We know, right? And it's only when we persist in mortal sin that that becomes darkened. Right? It becomes blackened, actually, right? And we become stupid, right? We think we're in the light, but we're not. We're in the dark. The people who are in the light can look and say, hey, you're in the dark, right? But the, no, I'm in the light. You're in the dark, right? Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. That's how that all comes about, right? So this is how, this is how we find ourselves right now. Right now, right? You know, you Catholics are bigots. You Catholics are intolerant. You know, we see this with, with Amy Barrett. Like, like she's the evil one, right? All right? This is, it's so prevalent. It's so prevalent now. Um, and so this this should really, you know, drive us to our knees, which I know it's, it's doing. 
uh, and uh, uh, and unfortunately, it, it somewhat uh, uh, has entered into the church. It's entered into the church, and I'm going to give you uh, the quick version of of this now. Um, I became a pro-life activist in the mid-90s, and a big part of me becoming a pro-life activist was reading Evangelion Vitae, the Gospel of Life, by now St. John Paul II. It was promulgated in 1995. So we're in the 25th anniversary year of Evangelion Vitae. Right? It's 2020. And in anticipation of, of uh, the 25th anniversary, the uh, uh, 25th anniversary of Evangelion Vitae, even as early as November and December, I started talking about Evangelion Vitae and doing on my Facebook Live and in different places uh, some catechesis in anticipation of of the 25th anniversary. And as uh, we got into the year 2025, I ramped that up to the point when I was in in Ireland for almost three weeks in February in February that's what I talked about I talked about Evangelion Vitae and I talked about uh, certain parts of Evangelion Vitae and also uh, how uh, we have fallen into a pit in terms of Evangelion Vitae and I had planned during that time to do a novena period leading up to the promulgation date of Evangelium Vitae. Who can tell me what day it was promulgated in, in, in 1995? The Feast of the Annunciation. All right, the Feast of the Annunciation, March 25th, 1995. So I decided that from March 16th to March 25th, I was going to do um, a novena, all right, where I highlighted uh, not only uh, the prayer and the end of Evangelium Vitae, uh, but also uh, just really focusing on Evangelium Vitae. And I was in New Jersey at the time. Right? I was in New Jersey at the time. And I felt that what a beautiful, beautiful period of time because uh, St. Patrick, all right, of course, is March 17th. All right, and of course, my exorcism crucifix with the first class relic of St. Patrick. And then the March 19th is my birthday, the feast day of, of, of St. Joseph. What a powerful period of grace this is going to be, right? What happened? Mm -hmm. What happened? Mm -hmm. In that nine day period leading up to March 25th, Diocese after diocese after diocese, not just here in the United States, but all right, in the uh, entire Catholic world, shut down, shut down. No sacraments, no mass. Right, the church shut down. Okay. This struck me, amazing. Uh, I mean, I, I found it amazing, because what I've been preaching about. In Ireland and elsewhere, in terms of Evangelium Vitae, is two things. Article 58. In Article 58, the Holy Father says, given such grave situations such as this, all right, we now more than ever to look the truth in the eye and call things by their proper name without compromise. And then a few lines later, he says, and we need to come to understand that procured abortion, when we talk about procured abortion, we're talking about murder. Murder calls abortion murder, okay? In Article 82, he invokes Timothy, and that we are to preach, we are to rebuke, exhort, preach, teach, in season, out of season, without tiring, diligently, without fear of compromise or hostility. I mean, and, and he says, and the bishops first and foremost have to live and preach and teach the gospel of life, right? So, and that theme, actually, of the bishops being the leaders in terms of proclaiming, catechizing, teaching, preaching the gospel of life is throughout the document. All right, what happened in the 25 years? Well, minimally, conservatively, a billion babies were mass murdered worldwide. The number we use worldwide every single year is 40 million on the low side, 40 to 55 million each year is murdered worldwide through abortion. 
So let's take the number 40 times 25. What does that come up with? A billion babies since Evangelion Vitae. Since the Holy Father called abortion murder, a billion babies were mass murdered, decapitated, dismembered, all right, taken from their mother's womb. All right? If a billion babies have been lost, murdered in that 25 years, how many souls have been lost in that period of time? The ripple effect of abortion. Billions. 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 The Holy Father says the gospel of life is the same as the gospel of Christ. We can't make any distinction between the gospel of life and the gospel of Christ. What does he mean by that? That they're both about the salvation of souls. The Catholic Church has one mission on earth. And that's the salvation of souls through the forgiveness of sin. Right? That's it. Our job here is to get to heaven and bring as many people with us as possible. And the Catholic Church's job is to help us get to heaven about the salvation of souls, right? Jesus is clear about that, all right? That he's clear about that. It's 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 that's what the binding and loosing power of the church is all about. I'll give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, what no sins you retain shall be retained, no sins you forgot, go on and on and on and on. The salvation of souls. In the twenty five years since Evangelion V when the Holy Father called abortion murder and challenged the bishops, all right, to live the gospel of life, a billion babies are murdered and billions of souls are lost. And on the 25th anniversary of Evangelium Vitae, what was the condition of the church? The Catholic Church was deemed non-essential, while abortion was deemed essential health care. Right? And we saw this state after state after state. My state, my governor, used that terminology. Abortion is essential health care while she allowed all the abortion mills to stay open, including the late-term abortion mills that were doing abortions up to the day of birth. And the Catholic Church in the world was deemed non-essential. Hmm. Nothing had a greater impact at the beginning of COVID-19 than me. This was the sign from Jesus. This was the sign from God. You're going to ignore this document, this infallible document by a now Pope Saint. And remember, it got no fanfare. It got no fanfare. The, the, the encyclical on its 25th anniversary was ignored. Why? Because COVID-19 hit, right? I mean, what was Jesus telling us? Right? What was Jesus telling us? You're ignoring the preeminent issue. You're ignoring the babies, the least of my brethren. You have rendered yourselves non-essential and allowed abortion to become essential worldwide. There's no escape in that. Did a podcast with Father Rick Heilman and Doug Barry. And I was all over social media with this in March. All over it. And continued to pound that point home. I was on a podcast, I think it was in June, the end of June, with, with Doug Barry and, and Rick Heilman's podcast. I hope you watch that every week. Um, um, and uh, I laid all that out, and they were blown away. They were blown away. And there's no denying it. There is no denying it. I mean, you know, what is COVID-19 all about, right? The immoral, corrupt people who have never cared about anyone's health or lives now become the bastion of health and life, and we just collapse in front of them? See, woe to those who call evil good, good evil. And so this is, I think, a tremendous reflection for us. It's still the 25th anniversary of Evangelium Vitae. And we have a vote coming up in a couple of weeks that's a matter of life and death. right? The blessing and the curse, right? Blessing and the curse. This, this is what we're looking at. This is what we're looking at, right? And indeed, uh, we have uh, a Catholic all right, who's in persistent mortal sin, all right, who has denied Jesus. He can talk about Jesus and his faith all he wants. But if you notice, if you notice, he talks about how important his Catholic faith is to him. He never mentions Jesus. Never mentions Jesus, right? Remember that famous, uh, 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 it's a video clip, and if you want to see it, it's actually, it's absolutely hysterical. 
if it wasn't so sad. But uh, they asked uh, uh, Nancy Pelosi one time uh, about what what is I forget the exact question, but it had to do with like what what is your favorite word? And she said, my favorite word is the word, the word. And, and you know what I'm talking about if you understand scripture. The word. Isn't it? Isn't that beautiful? It's so profound. She's going on and on and on about the word. Now she never mentions that the word is Jesus. She just is, and, and again, it's the same thing. Oh, aren't I so profound? Aren't, no, you're in the dark. You're in the dark. You just don't see it. Right? And and we see example after example after example. Right, of what sin does, persistent mortal sin. So uh, we do, again, have a very, very significant opportunity. Uh, again, grace builds on nature. Uh, and uh, the grace uh, that uh, I hope is going to come to fruition is the many rosaries, the many masses, the many novenas that have been done uh, in regards to this upcoming election. Uh, and then grace builds on nature. The nature is, all right, that the Trump campaign has assembled the greatest ground game, uh, the greatest uh, get out the vote uh, uh, organization in the history of politics, uh, and uh, get out the vote ground games are what win election. Uh, uh, let us let us let us hope. Uh, let us hope that our our prayers are being effective. That we are righteous and that. Our prayers are being effective. Um, if we lose this vote, then again, just as I think Jesus gave us a very clear message on March 25th, very clear message that everyone missed. I've already been talking about it, all right? If people don't choose the blessing and they choose to curse, right, we need to ask ourselves, all right, what is Jesus really telling us? Now, I really believe, right, that, that, uh, that we, are going to, uh, uh, we are going to prevail and that the people are going to choose the blessing so we can, what, all right, be fruitful in the land, right, be fruitful in the land. And, uh, uh, but, but from in these last few weeks, and I, I think that we should be doing a significant novena in those last nine days, uh, uh, to any number of saints uh, as we approach the election. So much to think about, much to pray about, much to ponder. Uh, I, I am not an end times guy. I'm not a sign of the times guy. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, people were talking about COVID-19 being a chastisement. Uh, if it's a chastisement, it's a chastisement for what I just talked to you about. If it's a sign of the times, it's the sign that I just told you about uh, and of course that everyone missed and what does that mean what does that mean and I'll end with this don't look for signs don't look for signs right there's only one thing that's important what is that are you in the state of grace are you in the state of grace right you fool, tonight your life will be demanded of you. Nobody knows the day nor the hour. Why are we looking at signs of the second coming of Jesus? Why? More than likely for all of us, the coming of Jesus will be in the particular judgment, not the general judgment. And if he comes for all of us, we'll have our particular and general judgment at the same time. And there's only one thing that's important. Are we in the state of grace? The kingdom of God is at hand, Jesus said. It's here. It's here now. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. And we Catholics believe in daily repentance, daily conversion. And mm -hmm. so uh, this is this whole idea. And of course, you don't hear about the state of grace anymore, uh, mortal sin anymore, right? Right? I mean, I, 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 I tell people all the time when they say, oh, we never hear about abortion, we never hear about contraception. Right? We never hear about these things, Father. I said, well, you never hear about mortal sin. I've been saying this for years. I said it on EWTN four years ago. Did this exact same. When's the last time you heard that one unrepented mortal sin can cost you your salvation? We don't hear about that anymore. In a, in a culture 
that is riddled with sexual sins, manifested in so many ways, abortion, homosexuality, lesbian, right, transgenderism, uh, sexually transmitted diseases, HIV, divorce, uh, goes on and on and on. Never hear the word chastity preached. Never. You hear it in every prayer of the faithful that I give at every single Mass and every morning offering on my Facebook Live. Um, so a lot, a lot to think about, a lot to reflect about. Uh, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, again, we have an opportunity, I think. And again, uh, you know, something's going on with President Trump. You, you heard about, you know, just the other day, somebody calling out and says, you're the most famous person in the world. You're the most famous person in the world. He says, no, I'm not. He says, yes, you are. He says, no, I'm not. He says, the most famous person in the world is Jesus Christ. Oh, praise wow. God. Wow. <laughs> he said that? Yeah. Praise yeah. Jesus. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, amen. Uh, uh, so uh, let's, let's just keep praying, fasting, uh, and uh, continuing offering up masses. And now let's... Stand and ask our Father in heaven to shed his mercy on all of our needs. For the Catholic Church, the Pope, bishops, priests, deacons, religious, for our seminary study, for the priesthood, for those discerning religious life, for mothers, fathers, husbands, wives, sons, daughters, brothers, sisters, that everyone in their vocations may desire to do all things in humble obedience, for the praise, honor, and glory of God, and atonement and reparation for our sins, atonement and reparation for all the sins against the sacred heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and for charity and chastity in our vocations, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the world, unity amongst all, uh, Eucharistic unity amongst all Christians, uh, the conversion of our culture, our country, our nation, our political leadership, our own daily personal conversion, the end of all the vicious attacks in our culture against sanctity of life, marriage, and family, for the least of Christ's brethren, the unborn, the poor, the sick, the thirsty, the naked, the homeless, the hungry, the imprisoned, for all those suffering any trial or tribulation, whether it be physical or spiritual, they may find comfort in Jesus as we reach out to them in spiritual and corporal works of mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And for the particular intentions of this Mass, which are your intentions, my intentions, uh, for uh, continued blessings on this beautiful ministry, Mary's Outreach for Women. Uh, for all the intentions we hold in our hearts, for all the people we said we would pray for, including those who may forget to pray for, for the souls in purgatory, especially those that have no one to pray for them, in particular our deceased loved ones and family members, and for our loved ones and family members away from the church and away from the sacraments, that they may embrace Christ's mercy, we pray to the Lord. And we ask for this, we ask for all good things through the intercession of St. Ignatius of Antioch and the Blessed Virgin Mary, all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, become for us the bread of life. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, become our spiritual drink. Bless you, God. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation or homage be pleasing to you, O Lord, just as you accepted St. Ignatius 
the wheat of Christ made pure bread through his martyrdom and passion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. Through Christ our Lord, for as on the festival of St. Ignatius you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so, in the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim, Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabato. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. And with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Grace you grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity 
in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. On your stay. We told you, Sheikh Al-Tamudi, me serve and reign always. On your stay. We told you, Sheikh Al-Tamudi, me serve and reign Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof. I am the weed of Christ to be ground by the teeth of bees, that I may be found to be pure bread. Just be careful here with the... Uh... Body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. 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 Amen. Body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. Let us pray. May the heavenly bread we have received, O Lord, on the feast day of St. Ignatius, 
Renew us, we pray, and make us Christian in name and in deed through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Come with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. God be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, Archangel defend, defend us in battle. battle. Be our protection, our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. devil. May God rebuke and humbly, humbly pray and do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, casting out Satan, and Satan, and all the evil spirits, spirits from all the world, the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Immaculate Mary, your graces we sing. You reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave Maria. All right, thank you, my brothers and sisters of Christ, for joining us this morning. I'm Father Stephen Abrado of Life Ministries US.org. Keep praying for us. We'll pray for you going to go across the street and uh, I'm going to try and do some type of Facebook live over there from across the street so uh, stay with us please share this video one share per group one share per page I love you pray for me I'll pray for you go out into the world today my friends and give them heaven mm -hmm.